Vision and production, and uh, to have only have a uh, half an hour. So uh, instead of uh, explaining the details of truth, I want to give a short summary of our results and some observations. Okay. So if you have any question about uh, uh, the details, so first let me remind you some uh, basic facts about the. Five funders report and uh, their business components. Oh yeah, and this talk is uh, based on the following two papers. The first one is uh, joined with uh, Augustina Strabovsky and uh, Shido Zhang, and uh, the second one is joined with uh, Sohila Mikfash and uh, Shido Zhang. Okay. And uh, okay, so we start with the uh, funders report, and uh, we call it Prime. If uh, it has a PCR rank one, and uh, in the in in the in, in this talk, uh, uh, we only consider prime fast reports, and uh, since it's uh, of PCR rank one, so we can just uh, pick up uh, uh, an ample generator of the its PCR group and de define its degree by this uh, intersection number. And uh, finally, there's another integer of uh, a social associated with this uh, x, which is called the uh, index, and uh, it satisfies the, the negative of the canonical class in the linear equivalent to the i times h. Okay, this is a three invariant associated with the uh, prime part of report. And uh, uh, we know that the father's report are classified uh, by this result. And uh, specific to a uh, prime case, we have the following classification. And uh, the index of a uh, prime class report uh, is between 1 and 4. And uh, the only uh, index for prime class report is just the uh, P3. And uh, similarly, for index 3 case, the only one is the uh, quadrix report in P4. And uh, next, uh, the next index is equal to 2. There's uh, five families of uh, prime class reports. And uh, here's are two examples, which will be mentioned later. The first one is a degree 2 case, which is called uh, uh, aquatic double solid. And uh, it is a, a, a double cover of P3 and branch along a degree 4 K3 surface. Okay. And uh, when degree equal to three, then they are just uh, the cubic three boards in P4. So these two index two examples. And uh, finally, for index one case, there are ten families of uh, prime class three boards. And uh, there are also two examples. The first one is called the uh, uh, Shankar Kai three boards, which of uh, degree ten, and uh, it is just uh, either. Uh, linear the intersection of a linear, linear section and the uh, quadric hypersurface in grass menu GR25 or double cover of a linear section of GR25. And uh, the second one is the degree 14 case, which is uh, always a co dimension 5 linear section of the grass menu GR26. It is uh, the index 1 example. And uh, for the index 4 and the index 3 case, so these two families of variety, we know that uh, their derived category has a, a full exceptional collection, right? And uh, for index 1 and index 2 case, in most of cases, their derived category uh, do not have a full exceptional collection. So we can uh, consider some non trivial simul dominant composition in the rep category and uh, uh, look at the, the risk to category. We, we call this uh, risk to category the Kuznetsov component. Uh, for example, for index 2 case, uh, the similar logon composition is given by the following. Here it's just the two line, exception line bundle, the structure shift, and the generator of the pickup group. And uh, for index 1 case, uh, we restrict ourselves to the place degree at least 10. Then we also have a, a lens 2 exceptional collection, which is given by a structure sheaf and a, a stable bundle. 
which is called uh, the Bukai bundle. And uh, yeah, it uh, maybe uh, it's proved by Bukai and the uh, recent result of uh, Beir, Marie, and uh, Kuznetsov that this bundle is unique and uh, exists on X in some sense. And uh, this this component uh, is a kind of non-competitive smooth project variety in the sense of a lot. And moreover, uh, in most of the cases, we will see later that uh, we can consider this closeness of component as a kind of a, a non-competitive curve. So for example, for index 1 and degree 12, 16, or 18, their closeness of component is actually equivalent to the derived category of some smooth curve associated with the uh, x. So in this case, the, this, uh, this this component is actually uh, can be regarded as a not uh, as a commutative curve, can be equivalent derived equivalent to the derived category of the smooth curve. But uh, for example, for the cubic triple case, so in this case. Its consistent component is no longer equivalent to the derived category of a smooth variety, since it is a, a fractional KBL category of uh, dimension 5 over 3, so, which means uh, uh, the cube of its cell functor is isomorphic to shift by 5. And, uh, and moreover, its uh, numeric K group of this consistent component. Uh, it has rec 2, which is the same as the derived category of a smooth car. So we can regard it in this, this, this component as a kind of a non commutative curve. Okay. And uh, by the result of uh, Bayer, Lahont, Macri, and Larry, that uh, uh, there we can construct a family of bridgeland different conditions <coughs> with these uh, components. So we can talk about the uh, the, the bridge length stable object with respect to some numerical class in this uh, Kuznetsov component, and then this will play an uh, important role in the later later theorems. Okay, and uh, let's talk about the, the bridge order reconstruction. So our motivation is the following classical result of the time. Uh, it is proved that. Uh, for well, uh, index 1 prime plus 3 for, of uh, degree 12 or 16, then so, uh, so we, we, we know that uh, there's a smooth projective curve Cx associated, associated with this x. And uh, Mukai proved that our final 3 for the x is, act, is actually can be realized as a generalized uh, Brunel locus in a moduli of stable bundles over this curve. So here, the generalized Bruno locus means that, uh, uh, so for example, for, for degree 12 case, the Bruno condition is just uh, given by the structure shift, which means uh, uh, the bundle in this uh, Bruno locus is only if the global section, the dimension of the global section satis uh, satisfies some, uh, is bigger than a, a fixed integer. And uh, for degree 16 case, uh, the Bruno condition is not given by a line bundle, but just given by a rank 2 bundle. And uh, the Bruno condition is just uh, uh, the, the lower bundle of the global dimension uh, after, after tensoring with this bundle. So this is the classical result of Mukai. So there's a nature question. So how about other prime bounds threefolds? And can we generalize this to other index 1 or index 2 prime bounds threefolds? <laughs> and uh, before we talk about how to generalize this, we need to uh, we have the following observations, which relates this theorem in terms of the uh, bridge and speed conditions and the Kuznetsov cool component. So first, let me fix some notations. So we denote the inclusion of the Kuznetsov cool component in the direct category by i and the i upper trig by its uh, uh, right at the joint functor, and uh, we can. There is uh, some distinguished object in the Kuznetsov component, which is called the green object of this uh, category 
OX or don't know. And uh, for index one case, uh, this uh, green object is given by the, the image of exceptional bundle EX under the image of this uh, right and joint functor. And uh, the, for index two case, the green object is given by the, this formula. This QY is just the, the kernel of an evaluation map of, uh, uh, of the, this uh, ample line bundle. And uh, yes, this is called the green object or green data in the sense of uh, Lanz and uh, Kuznetsov. And uh, our key observation is that uh, we know that for degree 12 and uh, 16 case, uh, the, the Kuznetsov component is actually equivalent to the direct category of this carb CX. And uh, we observe that uh, under this equivalence, the, the structure sheet or this uh, line, uh, direct two bundle fx will map to the green object. So this means we can completely uh, translate the theorem of Mukai into the uh, language of a Kuznetsov component and bridge the condition. Since we know that uh, the moduli space of stable bundle on carve is exactly the moduli of a bridge and stable object in the rep category of car. So to generalize this story, we can do the following replacement. So first, we can replace our uh, the, the, the car six with the non-complete car, which is our Kuznetsov component. And then we replace the moduli of uh, stable bundles over this smooth curve with the, the moduli of a bridge land stable object in Kuznetsov component. And finally, we replace the generalized Brunel condition with the Brunel condition given by the green object GX. So under this replacement, uh, uh, we can using the, 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 the tools of bridge and condition to generalize the, and recover the theorem of Mukai. So for index one case, uh, in the paper of Zvosky, uh, me, and uh, John, we prove the following theorem. Roughly speaking, we realize uh, uh, index one prime plus three four of degree at least ten as a real node locus in the certain bridge land moduli space in Kuznetsov component. And uh, if we take degree equal to twelve or sixteen, then this exactly recover the Mukai theorem as I have explained since this green object will map to the uh, structure shift or that uh, rank two bundle uh, on curve. So this is a direct uh, generalization of the Mukai theorem. So this is for the index one case. And uh, for index two case such as uh, cubic three fold, we have the similar result. This is uh, proved in the joint work with uh, Fact and John that uh, uh, for any index two prime plus three four of degree at least two, we also realize this y as a Brunel locus in certain bridge land moduli space in Kuznetsov component. And uh, so these two theories together just uh, complete the picture of a brilliant reconstruction of uh, index one and the index two prime one three fold. So any questions about this two theory? Yeah, maybe um, so implicit you were saying that in the case 12 and 16, the moduli space of um, on the right hand side is the classical moduli space as considered by Bukai. Yeah, exactly. Does it does that happen for any other D? Um, uh, since for other D, the closeness of component uh, is not equivalent to the derived category of a, of a smooth punching variety. So we, we do not know how to realize this moduli space as a classical moduli space. Yeah. This is why we, we use the closeness of component to generalize the theorem of Mukai. What about degree 18? Ah, degree 18. Yeah, this is a good question. So for degree 18, I think uh, uh, for in this case, the final threefold is uh, uh, also a kind of brilliant the locus in the 
呃呃那个 modulus of stable bundle over the curve. But in this case, we 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 also have this brain node. Uh, sorry, we also have this uh, brain node reconstruction. But uh, we we are not sure uh, if this uh, 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 coincides with the classic results. But for in for but for uh, index two and degree four case, yes, this coincides with the classical result. Yeah, in this case, uh, and in this case, y four uh, has uh, the same consistent component as uh, x eighteen. Yeah. How do you prove such a isomorphism? I mean, what does the idea behind? Yeah, the, the idea is that uh, uh, we need to uh, we need to start with a, a structure shift of close point, and we use this uh, functor i up star. So I, this i up star is uh, the left uh, joint of the inclusion of a consistent component in the whole the rep category, and we use this functor to project all the skyscraper shift of close point into consistent component, and the first step is to prove this object, this projection object is uh, is stable with respect to the this the condition, and uh, the second step is uh, and also the most hard, hard most hard one is to prove this embedding is actually a uh, uh, isomorphism between X and uh, the brain locus. It means for any object, stable object in this modular space satisfy this condition, we need to prove that it is isomorphic to the projection of a skyscraper shift. And this is a uh, this is a uh, by some uh, hard homological algebra. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, what the meaning of the factorial here? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, so, so in the definition uh, of the left hand side, you have inequalities, right? Greater or equal than MD. Yeah, yeah. So, what happens when they become strict? Uh, does it give you some interesting sub variety in X? Uh, sorry, you mean? So, let us look at all, all the ZF uh, such that the inequality is strict. Such that the definition of the small space is MD plus 1. This is a certain sub natural sub variety of X, right? Oh, yeah. What is the geometrical meaning of this sub variety? Uh, yeah, I never thought about this. But uh, yeah, this maybe gives some uh, modular construction of some sub variety of X. Empty. If it is empty, then uh, you can replace inequality yeah, with the point. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it is equal. That's what I think. <laughs> 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 okay. So, this is the most canonical sub variety of this. And uh, this is our two recon reconstruction theory. And uh, now I go. Uh, I want to talk about some applications of uh, these two theories. So the first one is called the uh, categorical Torelli series. So this is a for index one case. This is a direct direct uh, corollary of the, our previous theorem. It says that uh, uh, if we have an equivalence between QX and the QX prime such that this equivalence maps the green object to the green object. Then we'll get an isomorphism between uh, by the previous theorem, we get an isomorphism between Brinoda Brinoda locus, and then we get an isomorphism between uh, this uh quite fast reforms. So this is called the, the refined category with Torelli theorem. So this is our first corollary. And the second one, so if we look at the intake two case, we also know that by the previous theorem. If there's an equivalence between QX and QX prime and the maps maps the green object to the green object, we also get the, the isomorphism between X and X prime for index two case. However, in this in this in these two cases, uh, by previous result, we know that we do not need this green object 
uh, if we have uh, such an equivalence between cool snizzle components, then we'll get uh, the isomorphism between varieties. Uh, so, which means in, in this two case, it seems like uh, this this uh, green object is intrinsic or in some sense is uh, redundant for categorical Torelli theorems. And uh, for this question, uh, we prove the following theorems. This is in the joint work with the uh, and John. So we prove that for any index two prime plus three fold of degree two, three, or four, any equivalence of uh, cosinusal components will fix this uh, green object up to some auto equivalence of uh, their uh, on both sides, uh, and uh, we can write down this auto equivalence uh, uh, very uh, uh, precisely. So this is a uh, uh, what I mean that uh, for categorical Torelli theorem, the green objects are redundant. And as a corollary, combined with our Bruno reconstruction theorem, we can actually prove the 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 categorical Torelli theorem, which is the following. Which means uh, we, if we have an equivalence between cosinusal components, then we'll get an isomorphism between varieties. And uh, why do you exclude? Uh, for d equal to 5, actually, uh, since in this case the y5 is rigid, right? For this, only one f of one. And uh, in this case, the computation will be harder. So we decided not to include this case in our paper. Yeah. So this uh, categorical Torelli statement is trivial in this case. <laughs> okay. And uh, this corollary. Uh, previously, for d equal to three case, this is proved by uh, uh, several papers using different methods. And uh, for d equal to two case, uh, this query is proved by uh, Camila, Tekovic, and Rota. And uh, they need to uh, assume this index two prime plus three fold has some generic assumption. And uh, our query gives a uniform proof of all of all these cases and uh, uh, and uh, in full generality. We don't need to have uh, any generic assumption. Okay, this is our first application. And uh, and the second one is uh, uh, we can use this theorem to compute the group of uh, Fumi Mukai auto equivalence of this uh, cosine component. Uh, so, as we've seen, as we have seen that uh, for index 2 case, uh, uh, any equivalence between cosine components will fix green object up to some auto equivalence. So, which means uh, we start with an equivalence between cosine components and uh, composing with some equivalence, then we will index the green object to the green object. Then by the previous result, uh, maybe this is in paper of uh, Lee, uh, uh, Sidlari, and Zhao, and uh, I can't remember the all the authors, sorry. Yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. it's, it maps the green object to the green object. So we can lift this equivalence between cosine component to an equivalence between uh, OX orthogonal to OX prime orthogonal. And uh, moreover, we can show that uh, uh, in this equivalence between orthogonal of a structure shift can also fix the, the green object of uh, given by the, the M to line bundle, which means this equivalence can be lifted to an equivalence between the whole derived category. And then we can obtain the following query. Which is the following classification of a uh, uh, Mukai type of equivalence of this uh, cosine component. Are there some relations between these three? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's some relations. For, for example, for for d equal to two, a uh, three case, this uh, rotation up to some power is uh, actually the shift t functor, uh, maybe shift by shift by two. And there's some relations, yeah. We can we can write down this relation explicitly. Yeah. But for the 
but for the simplicity of a statement, I, I, I decided to write this as uh, uh, this. Uh, is it known if the group of auto occurrence is the same as the group of Fourier Mukai auto occurrence? Yeah, this is a good question. So for d equal to two three case, I think this is not known. But uh, for d equal to two case, this is by the recent result of Chen uh, Li, Xiao Li Zhao, and the uh, Laura Petusi, right? The, this two, the any equivalence between the two case with the component is of Fourier Mukai type. Yeah, but this is not unknown for d equal to three. Yeah. Okay. So it's a uh, index two case, and uh, for index one case, we have we can also classify the of equivalence. So we assume that uh, this is a uh, index one prime of from three folds of degree ten or fourteen, and uh, when d equal to ten, we we need to assume that. This x is uh, general in the borderline, and then we have the following description of the uh, Mukai type of the equivalence. And, uh, and here, uh, the generic assumption for d equal to 10 case is to ensure <laughs> that, uh, how to say, uh, to ensure that uh, it uh, in the in the language of uh, Debar and Kuznetsov, it's to ensure that this x is not the per pure residue of itself. We need to assume this. And uh, for non-general one, we we do not know the result of uh, auto equivalence of Kuznetsov components. Yeah. And uh, by the result of Kuznetsov, we know that. For any degree 14 index 1 prime of r three folds, there's a cubic three fold with, uh, associated with x such that their Kuznetsov the components are equivalent. And so sorry, you. Sorry, or oh, sorry, maybe. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this is the title. <laughs> yeah. So we know that this x and y has an equivalent uh, Kuznetsov component. So using the the, the, the these two calories, we obtain this uh, result, which says that uh, the auto equivalent, uh, automorphism of x is isomorphic to the group of auto automorphism of y. So I, I'm not sure. Uh, is there is there some classical reasons for this result? I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, we can prove this without using categoric methods. Yeah. Any questions about this recoveries? Okay. And uh, finally, yeah. Finally, uh, we can also uh, uh, give a, a partial re-disproof of a conjecture of Kuznetsov. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so let, let me let me introduce this conjecture. So uh, this is a conjecture of Kuznetsov, which says that uh, uh, for any e between one and five, there must be a correspondence. Uh, between index one and the index two from class three fold, such that uh, uh, this correspondence dominates each factor, and uh, any point in this uh, any pairs of uh, final three fold in this correspondence has an equivalent with this component. And uh, uh, and for uh, when the Degree is not equal to one or two. This is proved by Kuznetsov. And uh, for d equal to one, this conjecture uh, uh, can be disproved by com uh, some computation of a Hochschild homology. And uh, for d equal to two case, this uh, conjecture is disproved by uh, Bayer and Perry and the uh, work of John using different methods. Uh, actually, they proved that there. Uh, it can, uh, any uh, uh, degree two index two prime bar three fold and any index one degree ten bar three fold 
cannot has the equivalent acoustic uh, component, which is uh, a stronger statement of uh, this uh, uh, the conjecture, uh, stronger disproof of this conjecture. So why why I say this? Uh, we have a, a partial redisproof. <laughs> this uh, 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 we have the following query. So we see that for a general Gusen Bukaisi report, uh, or, or in other words, general index one D return from the uh, prime power three board, and uh, uh, degree two, uh, prime, the next two prime power three board, we prove that its Gusen component, their Gusen component cannot be equivalent by looking at the the, uh, the group of auto equivalents. Since we have shown that for general X, uh, all auto equivalents act on its uh, uh, numeric group by identity or just uh, the uh, just the actual signs is the identity. But for the quantum double solid, we know that there's a uh, auto equivalence on who y such that x non trivially on its numeric k group. So at the query, we have a such a uh, that uh, is partial read this proof. So, we, so, so the partial means that uh, we only prove this z cannot dominate the fir, uh, first factor, but we do not prove that it can cannot dominate the second factor. Yeah. So this is a partial disproof. Yeah. So this is all I want to talk about. Thank you. Yeah.